name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Now, today's message was filmed in Laurel, Mississippi, at the Gathering Place, our studio, where we had a conference, and we had a mighty move of God. So whatever you need from the Lord, increase your faith. This is your day for your miracle and your breakthrough. The Lord has given me a word, I believe, for all of us here today and all of you watching by television. And the title of this message is, This Is Your Now. Put your neighbor say, now. now. He spoke this word to me not long ago and says, the church is entering a season of now. Now miracles, now breakthrough, now deliverance, now doors to open. Because there's a great shaking in the world today. Even people that don't know Jesus know that something's going on in the world. And I believe during this time that a remnant is rising. See, not everybody is concerned. Not everybody sees. Not everybody that goes to church is saved. But I tell you, there is a remnant that we feel it in our spirit that Jesus is coming soon and we don't have time to waste. This is the now season. Now is the now time. And I believe we're going to see more miracles, signs, and wonders than ever before. Because that's who Jesus is. And I believe we're entering a season that he's going to make believers out of believers. And he's going to bring unbelievers to the cross because that's what the miracles were for in the New Testament is to grow the church. But you know, some of you have been praying about some things for a long time. And you have prayed and you have believed and you're saying, when, Lord? Why, God? But you know, you'll never appreciate your now season until you've been through some not now. Have you ever been through a not now season? And you're like, okay, Lord, how long is this going to take? I've been faithful and I've been obedient. Well, you know what? His timing is everything. Delay does not mean denied. So I want you to increase your faith that this is your time for your now. Are y'all ready for the word? Your now words. You know, we know about now faith. And you got to have some now faith to get you now word. All right, let's go to Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and who he seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you if his son asks for bread will give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Father, I thank you again for your presence. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, anoint me to teach this word. Anoint every heart to receive. Now, if you notice in these scriptures, ask, seek, and knock are all action words. That tells us we got to do our part. See, there's a lot of people that say, well, I'm waiting on God. I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to read my Bible. I'm not going to do anything. Well, guess what? You're going to be waiting a while. Because you got to do all you know to do, and then you stand and let God be God. Because faith is action. And when I was thinking about this scripture, I thought about my childhood. And I grew up in a little town called Popeville, Mississippi. Anybody ever heard of that? Well, that's amazing. (laughs) But it was very small. There was like one store, one cafe, and we had to go to town. Do y'all remember the days that you had to go to town to get groceries? It was like 10 or 12 miles away. And on this particular day, we were going to the Western Alto. Did anybody remember? I'm, I'm really dating myself now. The Western Alto. Well, it was my, my daddy and my brother and myself. And my younger brother found this five-speed bicycle that he wanted. 
And he aggravated my poor daddy until he got it. Well, we were on our way home, and I put on the biggest little pouty face you could. And he said, Sand, that's what he called me, Sand, what's wrong? I said, you didn't buy me one. And he said, well, I didn't know you wanted one. You didn't ask. <laughs> so I learned from an early age, if you want something, you better ask for it. And see, so many times as Christians, we get mad at God. We don't want to go to church. We get mad because everybody else seems to be blessed. And the Lord may be saying, well, why didn't you ask? Because we think the Lord is so busy answering everybody's prayers that, you know, he's not concerned with my little sickness or what I'm going through. Well, honey, if you're going through something, the Lord is concerned about it. But you'll never receive your now miracle if you don't understand that the Lord wants you to walk in victory and to receive that miracle. And if you don't understand his love. All right, let's do a little teaching here. I'm getting excited. Thank you, Ephesians 3, 17 through 20. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Now, we as Christians, we can jump a pew over Ephesians 3.20, exceedingly, abundantly, above. But why aren't we walking in the exceedingly, abundantly, and above? Because see, so many times, you've you got to go to the first part of this scripture. You've got to understand the love of Jesus. You've got to understand that he wants you healed. See, there's so many people that say, well, if the Lord wants me healed, he wants you healed. He's already paid the price on Calvary for your healing. But see, there's so many people that they feel like they're not worthy. I've disappointed God. I've got a past. And you don't understand the love of Jesus. If you don't understand the love of Jesus and how much he loves you, you'll never have the faith to receive your now miracle. I want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you just the way you are. Even you watching by prison, Jesus Christ loves you. And we all have a past, but your destiny is in your future and it's not in your past. But see, we're in a time in the body of Christ where we're trying to be like everybody else. Oh, this is the way you have a church. This is the way you preach. This is the way we sing, and we're comparing ourselves to other people when God has called you to be you. Yeah. And when you understand you are who God called you to be, that you are a child of the king, you're not a grandchild, you're the head and not the tail above and not beneath, God can use you for his glory. Yeah. Trying to compare ourselves there's a freedom when you know who you are in Jesus. See, the devil hates confident Christians. He wants you to walk around defeated and act like everything is gonna, nothing is going to work for you. But I'm telling you, the Lord is building an army. And it's an army of Christians with power. It's not a bunch of weak Christians that are walking around afraid of everything that's taking place. Can I tell you, the Lord is not surprised with everything that's taking place in the world. This is the greatest opportunity for the church to shine for Jesus because this church is looking for hope. The world is looking for hope. But see, we're waiting on other people to do what God called us to do. We're waiting on the church. But when we are the church, you are the church wherever you go, we assemble together. And revival is in you. All right, I'm just stepping all over it today. When the church becomes the church, the buildings will be overflowing. The pastors can't do it all. 
and they're going to fill up because the remnant is rising. Amen. So when we do all we know to do and we stand, God will be God. But if you notice this scripture, it says exceedingly abundantly above according to the power that is within us. That is your faith, but that's also the power of the living God. And if you've been saved, you have the spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead living within you. And the Lord woke me up a couple of months ago at three o'clock in the morning. It's something about that three o'clock hour. I was up at three o'clock this morning. <laughs> but he said, you, that scripture, Acts 1, 8, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Well, that's us. He said, you tell my people they need this power to survive in these last days. So if you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, now is your time. And if you're, maybe it's time to be refilled because the Bible says to be ever filled with this spirit. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Refreshing and empowering wherever we go. We can't blend in with the world and the, it, that we're living in now. We got to stand out and be the church with love. But the power, when Jesus said it is finished, it's done. We're waiting on him and he says, I've done it. That spirit, I have given you the authority. You go lay hands on the sick. You cast out devils. And see, some of you are afraid to pray for the sick because you're thinking, well, what? I don't know how to pray. Well, you're not the healer. He is. Your job is to be obedient. It's time for a boldness to come. And that boldness comes with being baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's right. Move that mountain. But when he, he died on Calvary, it was for us to walk in victory. The stripes was for our healing. You know, I heard a word the other day, and I thought this was, it was really, it was, it, because in so many conferences, we see people healed. And some of you here have been healed at our conferences. I know last time somebody was given a creative miracle, had a new neck and eyesight. And, but a lot of times these people, when they get out of the presence of the Lord, their symptoms come back because that's what the enemy wants. That's why you got to continue to walk and speak the word. But a word that I heard that I thought was really good is you've got to become from a, phys uh, a patient to a physician. So when the Lord heals you, your job is to go minister to somebody else and pray for somebody else. And that's the way we maintain our healing in our lives. So he paid the price for us. There is power in persistent prayer. Our prayer is one of the most powerful weapons that we've had. You've heard people say, well, we've done all we know to do but pray. <laughs> that better be the first thing we're doing right now. That's the only hope America's got is our prayers or the world that we're in. So let's talk just a minute about the power of persistent prayer. Yes, Lord. First Samuel 1, 26 through 28. And she said, oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed and the Lord has granted me my petition which I ask of him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. This is Hannah. She had every reason to be bitter. After 10 years, she was not able to have a, a child. 
And in those days, if you didn't have children, it was like it was you were under a curse. It was children were used as, you know, you to take care of farms and to take care of you when you were older. And, and it was such a disgrace to her. And then after 10 years, if your wife couldn't have a child, you could marry someone else, a maidservant. So he did. Pania was her name. The reason I know, I went to that little Google thing that says, how do you pronounce these names? <laughs> So if it's wrong, I'll just blame it on them. But anyway, every year they would go to the temple and make sacrifices. He would give his family, Pania, give Hannah a crumb. Just think of all the rejection that she'd been through. How she was probably had lost all of her confidence because there was good old Pania talking about her. Just look, <laughs> I can have a baby and you can't. But she kept being persistent. And she was so upset that she couldn't even eat. But she kept going. She kept being faithful and persistent. And so... She was so hurt and so rejected. And this funky woman decided she would pick herself up. She could have laid down and wallowed in misery. And she said, there's some things that I can't change. But one thing I can do is I can pray. And I'm going to pray like never before. And she went to the temple, and she was groaning, and, and she was interceding. In fact, Eli thought she was drunk and said, see, she had had, had enough. Have you ever had enough? Enough is enough. And Eli, she said, if you'll just grant me a child, I'll give him to the Lord. And she was granted her wish. And I want to ask you here today, what kind of barren situations do you have in your life? Yes, Lord. And so many times you may have been bitter because you've been rejected. Any of y'all ever been rejected? Well, if you're in ministry, you have. And I tell you what, people will give you their opinion if you want it or not. And maybe you've got some bitter roots in your life. And there's some things you can't change. Amen. And have you ever been in a pity party? <laughs> I have. It's kind of a lonely party, isn't it? Yes. And okay, men, you say women are hormonal hurricanes. <laughs> because we cry when we're happy. We cry when we're sad. We cry because we cry. We don't know why we're crying. Why are you trying to figure us out? But there comes a time in your life that you're going to have to say, you know what? Enough is enough. Some things I can't change. But one thing I can do is I can pray. So some of you need to get over the pity, pick yourself up and say, I'm going to pray like never before. If you're praying for lost children, you keep praying. If you're praying for your marriage, you keep praying. If you're praying for healing in your body, you keep praying. You keep believing because there's power in persistent prayer. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And sometimes right before your breakthrough, things get very hard. Have you noticed that? Because what the enemy wants you to do is to quit, give up hope, get discouraged and say, who cares anyway? But God's got something better planned for all of you. Don't give up in your persistent prayer. So what do you need from the Lord today? This is your now season. See, so many times it's hard to develop that now faith when your faith has been rattled for so long because you've been in that not now season. 
But I believe today with this group of radical Christians together, and you watch him by television, that the Lord can move mountains in your life. So let me tell you a little bit about how God created a child of hardship to a woman of worship. Um, so I grew up in humble beginnings. My grandmother raised me. My parents were in addiction. Just a lot of hits kept happening and happening back to back. However, God had his hand on me. I'm 37 years old, never been drunk, never smoked a cigarette. Always God has had his hand on me. That does not mean that I have not fallen short many, many times. But since a little child, he has kept his hands on me. Um, you know, throughout my life, I've, I've had so many hits from Satan trying to knock me down, and I know everybody here has experienced that. Um, 14, year, 14 years old, I was raped. I was put in foster care. I was molested. All these things kept happening over and over because Satan knew what God had on my life. He knew that I was going to grow up, and I was going to lead people to his kingdom. So if there's anybody out there today, know that you will be attacked. And sometimes it starts very young. I remember asking God, why is all of this happening? If you are real, why is this happening to me? I'm praying. I'm calling out to you. Why, God? And I heard, why not? Because he was persecuted. And sometimes we have to go through that because he is not of this world. This world is evil. And so every time that we open our eyes and step onto this floor, Satan is coming for us. He's coming for our children. It, things could have went a different way in my life, but I kept putting him first. So as I got older, I realized, okay, there are other people that look like me, that have been through things like me, but you would never know it. So when you have an opportunity to minister, sometimes people have a story that they are ashamed of. But when you are publicly professing your love for Jesus Christ, it weakens our heart. And, and I say weak, but it's also strong. You can, you can be a follower of Jesus and be meek and be weak and be hopeful and loving, but he gives us a strength like no other. Amen. So when I got real where I was fake at, did you hear what I said? I got real where I was fake at. Then I started believing. Then God started blessing me because I had a shame over me. A shame that my parents were addicted. A shame that my father was incarcerated. A shame that we were on government assistance. A shame that we were uh, poverty driven. Ashamed of all of these things. But God used that to my advantage today. And today I have financial freedom. And today my children are doing well. And I can't tell you how thankful I am. But at the same time, if we don't keep him first, what we are blessed with can be taken like this. Because not every good gift comes from above, does it? So the next time you're sitting there thinking, why me? Why me? Why did this happen to me and my children and my family? It's because God knew that you were strong enough and he gives his battles to his strongest soldiers. Amen. Amen. So like I said, when I stopped feeling sorry for myself, God really started to bless my life and my ministry. And now I talk to children that are in foster care. I talk to people that feel like taking their lives. And God says, no, Monica, this is your ministry. Talking to children, talking to women, talking to the broken. Because sometimes he has to break you for you to understand what it takes to be put back together. Amen. So when I heard Miss Sandra speak, it was like heart darts. And I sat there feeling convicted and I said, God, send me a message that I too can share. Send me a message where I feel good enough. She looked right at me. And it was at that time that I realized God, I see what you're telling me. I hear what you're telling me. Let me get out of my own way because we are all in our own way sometimes, aren't we? When we get out of our own way, that's when God starts working. And I just encourage everybody here today that has a story and some like mine, some even worse. Get out of your own way and allow God to continue to use you. Step into what he has for you. Use your pain for purpose, okay? Use your pain for purpose because everything that I have been through is a ministry and a testimony to help other people. And I'm so incredibly thankful for that. 
And I just thank you. I pray this message blessed you and you've got your mind made up that no matter what you're going through, now's not the time to quit. Now's the time for you to increase your faith for your miracle and your breakthrough. If you're watching this program and the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, see some of you that are watching, you know how to go to church. You know religion, but you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And if you're interested and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and it's no accident that you're watching, I want to lead you to Jesus. So just pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross just for me and you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart and come into my life. And from this day forth, I'm going to live for you. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. Find you a good Bible-believing church and grow to be more like Jesus. Now, if you're watching today and you need special prayer, we do have a prayer line. Call that number, leave a message, and we'll be sure to call you back. We still serve a miracle-working God. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we pray for you every day. And if you're not partnering with us or you've never sent a donation, we need your help because television is expensive and this world needs Jesus. Any amount would be appreciated. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus. My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Many of you that are watching this broadcast, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. You've got some impossible situations, but I got some good news. You have hope in Jesus because we still serve a supernatural miracle working God of now. I also would like to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. It would make our day to have you as our guest. If you think our broadcast is powerful, wait and come and experience the presence of the Lord. You'll love it. Also, I want to thank our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we thank you for helping us spread Jesus to a hurting world. God bless you all.